Hello, my name is Arturo Ramos and I work for the Yuma County Library and today is basic 3D printing. Um, so as you can tell, I have a 3D printer right next to me. This is the MBOT Grid 2. Um, it's one of our older models, but it still gets the job done as you can tell. Um, so we're going to be going over four major components that is needed in order to 3D print. But before we start that, um, I highly suggest that you do some research on how to start or how to load or create your own printables. Um, there's two that I'm going to be giving you today. Um, one is an open source website uh, called Thingiverse that you can go to and it's actually other printables that people have posted or made or designed themselves so that you can take and actually 3D print. Um, if you're planning on trying to learn how to do it on your own, mPrint is the program that we use here at the library in order to make our own objects and 3D print for. Um, that is a great program to use, in, including exporting files into an STL format in order for your 3D printer to read. Um, so yes, I, so before we start all this. But now let's get into this. Um, the four major components that you're going to need to know about is the first is the SDHC card. Uh, SDHC is Secure Digital High Capacity Card. Usually you'll see these because people store photos or music files and things like that into it. Um, but today it's going to be storing STL files. Once you have your printables either downloaded online from the site or made from your imprint yourself, you'll be exporting them into this SDHC file card. Um, you'll place it back into the port here. And in the front, you'll use the control panel to actually select which 3D print you want. Because you can, of course, put multiple onto the card. Uh, the next part is the hotbed itself. Uh, the, hop, the hotbed is actually a glass, it's made out of glass. Um, we put tape on it, that's why ours might look a little bit different. The only reason we put tape on ours is because after the 3D print is done, it's easier to come off when we take it off. Just a little life hack there. Um, at the bottom of it, we do have three magnetic strips that actually magnetize to three ports inside the 3D print. Um, that's to make sure that your print is secure. Um, there's, it works on a grid. So on the top, when the grid is moving, the actual extruder, which is the next part we're going to be talking about, when it's actually moving the extruder, um, it's putting it into a grid of how your 3D print is going to come out. Now, I took this already. Most of the 3D printers, when you purchase them, they already come pre-assembled. Pre um, so you don't have to worry about taking it off. I'm just taking it off for educational purposes. Um, so as you can tell, this is the extruder. This is where um, you're actually, is, the magic is all getting done. The filament's going to be shooting out of the nozzle here. So the first part, this is actually um, the bottom part of the nozzle. This is where the heat is coming from. This is what's going to be heated up to actually push the filament through and then cool on the plate in order to make your 3D print. We do have a sensor to make sure to know not when your uh, it gets too close to your hot plate. And of course, the fans to cool down the filament that's getting processed through and to maintain temperature. Um, because the highest it can go is about 200 and 10 to 260 degrees Fahrenheit, it gets pretty hot. Um, of course, this is just cogwheels in the center to actually slowly spin and pull the filament through so that it can keep um, creating your 3D print. The last piece that we're gonna be making and be going over today is filament. Now, filament is layered plastic that is actually used and heated to create the object that you're looking for from angels to small Charmanders to Batman logos. Um, yeah, so there's different types that you'll see online. Um, usually they'll see like nylon or PLA. This is the one that we're using today is PLA. And they come in different colors, black, red. Um, they even have a glow in the dark, which is great. We have that here. Um, but uh, basically, don't um, you want to look through manufacturer's instructions according to some newer ones to see which one works better, better for the nozzle that you have. Um, for us, it's the PLA, which is a lot more, it's a lot thinner when it comes to the actual fiber when it runs through the 3D print. So, but yeah, those are the four basic information that I'm gonna give you today. I don't have that much time, but I kinda wanna give you the basic of it. Hopefully I can get another program started. If you have certain questions or anything like that, please contact the library and uh, yeah, thank you for your time. At the end of this video, I also included some resource links so that you can actually go to Thingiverse and see the printables that people have posted online and the website to go to to download the mPrint. Um, I also included some book resources 
offered by the library and a time-lapse video of the 3D printer actually making a 3D print. Thank you again.